Hi, I'm Michael Clark, and I'd like to introduce you to a very special road trip vehicle. This is the 2013 Ram 1500, but it's a very special Ram 1500 because this is equipped with the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 plus the eight speed torque flight. It's even got the active air suspension that allows it to lower down at highway speeds. Also really handy for entry and exit. And there's additional fuel saving technologies here, including active grill shutters. So why exactly do I have it? Well, what you're looking at here is the Honeymoon Ram 1500 edition. That's right, Michael Clark is off the market. And I decided it was time to take a road trip back to one of my fondest childhood memories, and that's down in South Dakota as well as Wyoming. So we're gonna check out things like Mount Rushmore and such and see if we can remember where in the heck Waldrug is. But why we're here today at Carlson Truck Outfitters is something that a lot of people need to think about when they're getting themselves a pickup. And that that's the use of a box cover. Now, you've seen the different types of covers that exist on the market, such as the vinyl soft ones that have existed on El Caminos and things like that. But today, people are using trucks like this in such a way that they want to keep things secure. And it's not just for luggage, it's also for things such as contractor tools. And you definitely don't want to come back to your truck and find all of that missing. So we're going to be installing the Retrax 1 on this particular Ram 1500. And believe me, it's a story you need to know about because it's developed in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And if there's one thing they know, it's how to make something work in the cold. Now, if you've got thoughts, feelings, or questions about anything to do with the Ram 1500 or the Retrax, send us an email at honkyourhorn at live.ca. Buckle up, it's time for the road trip. Well, we're down here at Carlson Truck Outfitters, and when it comes to truck accessories, Dave Conlon, he's our go-to. Dave, thanks for joining us once again on the road trip. Again, thanks for having me. Now, Dave, I wanted to get a feel for what's been going on in the world of the tonneau cover. I remember the old school vinyl ones with the pieces of uh, hardwood inside to help keep them from bowing down. And I'm, I'm thinking things have come a long way since that old 454 SS. It's come a long way from the days of having little snap tight locks and whatnot that are that are traditionally were used on it uh, to pieces that are lockable now. They're uh, they're constructed out of heavy material. They're designed to keep stuff locked up and protected and away from the elements. Well, speaking of the elements, we certainly have heard about different types of systems, and the one that really got our attention was when you told me about the Retrax and the fact that it's made by folks that really understand cold weather the way we do. The people at uh, Retrax in North Dakota figured it out. Um, for many, many years, people were using Pace Edwards, Jack Rabbit, things of that nature. But as soon as the snow would fly, these tonneau covers became useless. Um, you couldn't open them, you couldn't close them, springs were snapping. Somebody finally figured out, we've got a way of solving this. And that's what Retrax has done. Now, the one thing I wanted to do is take a look inside the box here on this new Ram. Now, this is the new Ram box, which now comes in two sizes. This is the one that people are most familiar with. This is the five foot seven interior dimensions for the box. And as you can see, we have the compartments on each side, but we also have the cargo management system here. We've seen this used on a bunch of different trucks. Nice to be able to move the cleats back and forth, depending on what you're going to be putting in here but the concern I have especially because it's not my truck is if we're going to be putting something like this in how well does it mesh in to the factory mount points when it comes to the Retrax 1. The one nice thing about the Retrax 1 is we're not going to do any drilling to this truck whatsoever. It's all going to be used in the cargo management system in the rail system that's where our points of attachment are going to be. Well, that's great for putting it in and not having any issues that way. I was uh, curious, too, about how you have a locking mechanism working here now. Is that something that just simply works within the tracks, or there's no reason to ha have to bolt or add anything on? All the locking mechanism is done in the track where the roller ball bearings go in. Um, it will lock in any position that you want it to lock into. Um, just a really well thought out system and, and so few moving parts in it. Well, I think what we should do is we should take a look at the inner guts of the system before we get to work. Absolutely. Let's take a look. 
Well, what we're looking at now is the inner workings of the Retrax system. So it's important to point out that when somebody puts something like the Retrax into their truck, it is going to take away a little bit of space because, of course, that's how it all rolls together. Absolutely. The canister itself is going to take up a little bit of room. Um, that being said, with any type of roll top canister, it will do that. The Retrax doesn't take up any more space than, say, a Pace Edwards or a Jackrabbit. But the nice thing about this is, is it all rolls into predetermined slots, which are in there, and that allows it to freely move amongst itself. It never lays on top of it on, on itself. Um, so, hence, winter time rolls around. You're not worried about these pieces freezing together. Well, the other thing, too, that I've noticed here, especially with these guides, is that there appears to be some fairly robust bearings that go along with it. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and also about the lubrication that's going to help them in the cold winter months. The actual bearings themselves are a sealed Timken ball bearing. Um, Retracts themselves actually recommends that you do not lubricate or touch these bearings in any which way, shape, or form. Um, during uh, the, the cover being new, um, it, it may be a little bit jerky um, sliding it at first. And they say, you know what, if you like, put a little candle wax in there and that'll help things out. But other than that, no maintenance required other than just washing it. Now, for something like this, I was curious too about washing it and what happens with any water or moisture that will actually somehow find its way in. Is there a specialized drain system to make sure that it doesn't start to compromise the inner workings of the retracts? Well, typically what's going to happen is, is when the retracts itself is getting wet and this piece is laid on top, the water is going to find its way back here. Um, once the water hits that drain, there are two drain tubes at the bottom of each um, section of this and it'll drain right out of the bottom of the box. So all you have to do is just run the tube out one of your drain holes and you're good to go? Absolutely. That's all there is to it. Now, I'm taking a look here at the uh, tracks. Now, these, of course, will be the pieces that will go onto the sides of the box. The one thing I actually did notice is how robust the weather seal is. And I, I think that's what people really need to realize is that something like the retrack system can really do a great job, not just in the security factors, but also in guarding against the elements. Well, that's for sure. Uh, retracks themselves actually say that these things are 99% watertight. The only way that you're actually ever going to get water through the top of this cover into the box is holding a pressure washer within six inches of it. And even at that, it's going to be a very minimal amount that's going to come in. Now let's talk about warranty for something like this. And in the time that you've had the retracks, have you had any warranty issues? The retracks one is warrantied for three years um, against any defects or workmanship or anything of that nature. Um, I haven't yet to have one come back for any warranty issues. The other thing I was curious about is the locking mechanism. Now, is that something that is also treated to work well in the cold weather? The locking mechanism itself, as we can see over here, um, it's just a matter of pushing down on top of this. And in that lock cylinder um, has dry graphite grease in it right from the factory. So there is no lubrication required. It's done and that's it. Should a person be leaving the flap open on a consistent basis, that's something that you can do, but it's not, it's not necessary. Now, the surface ex itself, that's what I was actually curious about, is these panel pieces. Now, the one thing I've noticed here is that there's a bit of a honeycomb type of construction in here, so it's certainly going to add to the rigidity. But I am curious, of course, as to somebody who's got pry bar eyes on their mind, how hard is it to get into if someone wants to try to break in? It's going to be pretty tough because you're never going to get a pry bar into the side of it once the tracks have been installed onto the top of this. The only way somebody's really going to get into this thing is they're going to start jumping on it. You tend to notice when someone's in your driveway jumping on you, your truck. You would think that you'd hear it by that point in time that somebody's trying to get in. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to get into the installation on the Retrax 1. I think it's time we get to work. Sounds good. The hardware supplied with the Retrax 1 retractable bed cover goes into place on the factory cargo management rails for the RAM box. And make sure that you measure at least twice to get just the right fit. Once those attachment points are in place, it's time to lift the entire cover assembly onto the RAM box. It's quite easily done because, remember, we're using fairly lightweight materials here with Lexan and aluminum, so it doesn't take too much effort to get it into place. 
You'll notice that the cover itself held in the carrier takes up a little bit of room at the front of the box, but you'd be surprised how much room is actually left underneath. And if you're using the partition that can be also used as a tailgate extender, you'll be able to work it just right for your cargo needs. What I like about the Retrax 1 is the thick rubber stripping that goes along the sides. It looks factory fresh and it does a great job of keeping out moisture and dust. Well, Dave, that didn't even damage my decrepit body putting that into place here, so that was definitely appreciated. So once it's in place, and it seems as though the old adage of measure twice has paid off and things are lining up quite nice here. I got lucky this time, I have to admit. You know what, one, one try and uh, down it went and, and we're pretty happy with that. We've got a, a few more screws to put in here to secure it, um, but other than that, that's about it. Um, we always want to make sure that we have a certain amount of spacing between the tailgate and the actual retrax track itself so that there's no binding when the tailgate closes and it gives us adequate seal when the, when the cover is closed and it, and it covers up our tailgate. Is there anything special we have to concern ourselves with the install when it comes to the weather stripping? Uh, typically, no. The weather stripping itself almost wants to lay in its place by itself. Um, most of these weather strips have molded themselves right from the factory, and it just works out really, really well. So what we'll do now is go with the attachments, and then I think it's just about ready to roll over into place. We're about ready to do our final fit. Well, Dave, you know, the sign of any great install when it comes to anything aftermarket is to actually have something that looks like it grew there. And I got to tell you, the way this Retrax one fits in and so beautifully with the factory management system, I think it should almost have Mopar stamped on it. In a lot of cases, uh, you would think that that's something that should have to be on there. <laughs> um, it's surprising that the, that the dealers don't actually push these a little bit more when they do sell the trucks. Well, definitely it's a good way to get across the fact that something like this needs to occur for so many different people. The one thing I wanted to point out here is when you bring the tailgate down, there's actually no concerns for the tailgate to actually contact the mechanism, the sliding rails in any way, shape or form. So that's working out extremely well. Now, the other thing you had mentioned earlier is that as time goes along, the heat from the outside is going to help bring those gaskets just a little bit more into line and make sure you have a proper seal. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, where, uh, where you're going to be heading to with the heat and whatnot that you're going you're gonna to hit, I mean, give it about a day or two and it's going to look like it was made there right from the factory. Well, and now that it's all attached in here, and of course the beauty of the system too is that if you ever had to take it out for any additional servicing, for example, getting a Carlson Truck Outfitters liner put in the back of it, then that's very easily removed to facilitate any additional things that you want to put into the box. The, the actual removal of this to have to take this out uh, with two people would be less than five minutes now that it's all been installed. Well, the other thing too is that from time to time you might even want to put in on specially equipped trucks a slide-in trailer uh, very large items that may necessitate uh, something that has to be removed but for the most part for everyday truck use this is going to make a lot of sense to helping keep items secure for most truck users absolutely and the one big thing about especially where we live out of sight out of mind makes a big difference this thing's locked up and secured nobody's really going to want to have a look in there to see what you've got now the company Retrax, it's U.S. based and I'm curious as to whether or not this is the only type that's currently available in the Canadian market or is there some additional products that might be coming our way? The Retrax 1 is the only one available on the Canadian market. However, they do make a Retrax 1 that is called a Power Trax and what that'll do is it'll turn into or it'll tie into your key fob and it's a matter of pushing a button and it'll electronically open and close itself. Wow, that's fantastic. So what we are going to do with this cover is we're going to use it. We're going to take it with us for the Honeymoon Ram 1500 edition journey down to Point South. And we'll definitely give it a good test because if there's one thing I like to do is find as much interesting side of the road kitsch as I can and, and throw it in the back. So Dave Conlon, I want to thank you for setting us up with the Retrax and I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun using it on our honeymoon. Thanks again for having me on the show, Mike. Enjoy the truck, enjoy the Retrax and enjoy your honeymoon.
And now it's time for the honeymoon. And with my blushing bride, Carol, and our wedding ducks, we loaded up the Ram 1500 and headed for South Dakota. Wanted to try to recreate some of the memories that we had from when we were kids on the family road trips. Now the scenery is absolutely stunning and make sure that you do a little bit of hiking. You may run into some construction, but don't let it ruin the honeymoon. Make sure to take the road that winds through the Badlands and be aware of a lot of motorcycles because they love the curves as much as I do. Oh look, there's something large in the distance. It must be Mike's favorite science fiction thing, and that's Devil's Tower in Wyoming. The Hulet Motel has beautiful A-frames worth checking out. Oh, uh, and Carol tried to get a job there, but they weren't hiring. Custer is a great starting point to get to different things around the South Dakota area, such as Mount Rushmore, which took 14 years to finish. There's also the Flintstones theme park. I was there in the 70s. And the Prairie Berry Winery just north of Custer. You can get into the tasting, but not too far into the tasting. And meet some great people that have been making wine for five generations. Chamberlain, South Dakota has a beautiful view of the Missouri River. There's also other beautiful views around that Mike wanted to tow home. And he begged like you wouldn't believe to try to get them there. Deadwood, South Dakota has the reenactments of Frontier Days. And make sure that you pay your respects to Wild Bill. You gotta do the Mitchell Corn Palace. That's the South Dakota thing. Here's what 4,000 kilometers of bugs look like. Hankinson has a great antique shop, the Antique Depot. The Ingalls Homestead in DeSmet, South Dakota, well, it'll definitely help you out if you've got any issues with your love of living on the prairie. Carol's a big fan of the Laura Ingalls Wilder stories, so I thought I'd put her to work in the frontier sense, and she definitely can handle it just like a Wilder. Apparently, I'm exceptionally good at hauling manure. Let's just say this, you don't want to know what tiger meat is. Make sure you're being safe when you're taking those great shots on vacation. And you'll also be happy to be sipping fuel like this Ram. 11.5 liters per 100 kilometers is what we experience, and that's at interstate speeds of 130 kilometers an hour. Make sure you bring a first aid kit, just in case. And always use quality fuels. Check out some of the bed and breakfasts like the Lady on the Lake. And get some exercise while you're in Hankinson, North Dakota. Special thanks to Chrysler Canada for making this honeymoon fantastic. You probably heard a lot about the rat rod craze that's sweeping the nation. But what you probably haven't seen one is one that's put together exceptionally well, yet still showing off the patina of the old. And that's exactly what we have here with Jim Van Art. Jim, tell us a little bit about this truck here. Well, it's a 1936 Ford truck cab. That um, seems to be about all it's 1936 Ford on this thing. Yeah, actually, uh, I've got actually 48 Ford uh, front end on it with the uh, new shocks, shock towers. Um, it's a slant six, 225 slant six. Well, I have to ask the question, what uh, prompted you to put a slant six into it? I guess just being a little bit more unique than everybody putting a small block in. Mm -hmm. I see you got some uh, custom airbrushing work done on there, a uh, little bit of skull action. Uh, who did that for you? That's our faithful buddy, Kevin Wilson. And uh, he's also part of the El Diablos Car Club, right? That's right. So the El Diablos, it's all about the, uh, the rat rod way of life, uh, because you have another rat rod as well, right? Yep. That's a, a 48 yep. Ford? 48 Ford Roadster. 48 Ford Roadster. Yep. So 
What's the interpretation you really want to go with here? I mean, I notice that you're keeping as much patina as possible here. You got the original moss <laughs> still, yeah. still on it. Actually, the original windshield is still in pretty good shape too. Um, but the other thing is, is that what, what I want people to understand is that this is still going to be a very safe and operational vehicle. There'll be no rust holes in the floorboards, no rust holes in the doors. Um, all the kingpins are replaced, the tie rod ends are replaced, uh, universal joints are replaced, you know, um, fenders, you know, the proper angle of fenders, uh, headlights, running lights, windshield wipers. It's gonna have, it's gonna be a totally safe vehicle. I understand you've got a uh, old school mechanic who's helping you with that. Uh, wanna, wanna point that out? Yeah, that's right. That's uh, Don Park, of course, another El Diablo. Um, he's the electrical mechanical guru of the car club and um, handy guy to have around. Very, very good to know. You know, the one thing I've noticed here is especially how robust you built the frame on this. Uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, construction. Well, it's a two by four square tubing, uh, fish plated. Um, it's one eighth wall. Um, it's all arc welded. Um, a lot of people like to MIG weld a frame, but I'm totally convinced that arc welding is more the way to go. And um, it's kicked up four inches in the front and 11 inches in the back. It's got the elliptical suspension front and back just to make it a total unique rat rod kind of vehicle. Well, from what I remember on uh, the 48 Ford, that wishbone actually came together. So you split the wishbone. Split the wishbone. And uh, you got the tie rod ends there that can be adjusted. But you know what really struck me was what you've done back here in the rear suspension. Let's take a look at that. These are my shock towers here. Um, there's going to be a uh, pan hard bar going in just to stop any kind of side to side movement. Uh, my battery's gonna be in the back here. My toolbox is gonna be in the back here. I am putting a floor in there and- uh, I love your gas tank. <laughs> Yeah, it's a beer keg. And I noticed that uh, it actually looks like it's held in with rubber straps, but you've actually got it held in properly on the bottom there. It's, you can pull a car out of the ditch with this uh, <laughs> gas tank. Now, the other thing I noticed here is that you're using a stock Dodge truck rear end, but you're also using the transverse spring that was used on the Ford. That's right. Um, also, the uh, box itself, I believe uh, that's kind of unique too. What did this originally come off of? Yeah, that's a 1940 Willys box. It's been shortened and sectioned and chopped, and there really isn't much left of the 40 Willys box, but it is definitely a Willys box. So. You know, speaking of uh, other parts and pieces that I've seen here that have definitely come from other things, did I see some Edsel inside here? You, you need to do something with an Etzel. You may as well steal parts out of it. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the dashboard. That's uh, the original Etzel dash with 11 and a half inches cut out of the uh, center of it. So much for the, a radio. <laughs> uh, no radio. You know what? When you have something like this, you don't need to listen to the radio. Well, you got to listen to all the people saying how cool it is. So. Yeah. I uh, noticed that you actually took the um, uh, side sections from the doors and worked them into the dash, so uh, that's also out of the Edsel. It is definitely a wraparound dash. But, uh, you know, the interesting thing about a rat rod, of course, is how you reuse a lot of the parts that you get from the donor vehicle. Now, in this case, that was a 78 Dodge truck. Yep. So, as you can see, we've got the Dodge steering column, uh, full Dodge wiring harness into it, and um, I, gotta, I gotta admit, uh, that doesn't look like a stock floor. Did you actually fabricate that yourself? That's all my handiwork there. Now, how did you do the, uh, the ridges for uh, making it a little more stable? Well, I tried looking on the internet and tried, you know, talking to people about putting uh, um, uh, beads in the floor just to give it some extra strength and I pretty well ended up with nothing. So I built my own tool and that uh, seemed to have worked pretty well. Wow, you're fabricating your own floorboards, that's fantastic. Yep. And uh, I also noticed too here, you've actually gone a little bit overboard on the door latches for safety. Uh, what do these come out of? Uh, believe it or not, it's a uh, freight liner. Um, I could order uh, bear claw latches, and, uh, but these were totally exactly what I was looking for, mm -hmm. and they work just amazingly perfect, so. Well, I think what, what's really important to note here is that as much as some people may look at these things and get a little frightened, 
because they may not have a shiny coat of paint on them, they're built right. It's totally built right. So Bobby, it's done. How do you like it? I love it. How's she ride? It's great. Nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. And how about that Slant 6 power? Wow. <laughs>Hi, I'm Michael Clark. This is the 2014 Ford Mustang GT Convertible. That's right, the one with the 5.0. And these are the five things. You know, there's nothing worse about putting up your hood and just having a whole lot of plastic to show the folks at cruise night. But the good thing about the Mustang GT is that they're trying. They're actually trying really hard. We've got powered by Ford, well, I guess I can't really call them valve covers. They're coil-on plug covers. Uh, we've got something here that seems to be mimicking the look of the plenum. And wow, look, a big five liter badge, just like the ones on the fenders. But what I really do like under the hood is this strut tower brace. Ties in the cowl quite nicely, keeps the shake down to a minimum. You've got cold air induction, 420 horsepower, 390 foot pounds of torque. The nice thing too is that they've actually made the engine compartment accessible enough that you can have the battery under the the hood. Strangely enough, it's not that tight, so it's going to contribute to good servicing when it comes to down the road. When it comes to getting into the Mustang driver's seat, follow these steps. First, grab a bag of ice. Next, get into the Mustang driver's seat close the door, and apply the ice to where it immediately hurts. The culprit is the tilt lever, which hangs just low enough to whack your right knee. Top-down cruising can quickly cool you off, as well as the GT Brake Performance Package, which includes Brembo front calipers, upgraded wheel tire combo, and ventilated discs front and rear. The GT's hood isn't just a styling exercise. It sports functional heat extractors. The front seats for Mustang will need some tweaks for the next gen. Neither seat returns to the previously adjusted recline position. There's front side airbags and articulating front headrests, which pivot forward to capture the right amount of comfort. They are a little on the thick side, just like the guy playing with them. The rear headrests drop down for improved vision with no passengers present. The 2014 Ford Mustang GT Convertible has an MSRP of $44,799. With options, this Grabber Blue GT drop top tips the scales at $51,949 with destination and delivery. A Camaro SS Convertible is a little more bred with an MSRP of $44,820. In Canada, Mustang makes it happen, outselling both the Camaro and the Dodge Challenger combined. Important to note that Mustang has never taken a break from production. We expect the 2015 Mustang to drop at the 2014 New York Auto Show, 50 years to the date of the original. There's already serious talk about an EcoBoost mill, but it won't be the 3.5 liter V6. That's right, a four-cylinder, two-liter EcoBoost is expected to be offered as the choice for thrift. The first Mustang four-banger since 1993. Have a Mustang question? Ask the man who drove one at steelbeltedmind at gmail.com. Happy motoring!